This image is titled, O Grave, Where is Thy Victory? There is a man in thorns and these two floating women are angels who have come to free this dead man. It isn't a bleak image. It comes from a Christian text about the triumph of faith over death. Personally, I find the image beautiful and slightly haunting. It speaks to different emotions and that makes it more compelling. The artist is Jan Terop and he is a great artist. You can see that Art Nouveau style in how the women have long curved bodies, the curve of the hair and the curve of the body. They are parallel to each other. It's a simple shape repeated. If you reduce the composition to its basic structure, you see three curved horizontal lines and there are also curved vertical lines that frame the image. The women's bodies are curved and then the trees curve with them. This brings your eye into this part of the canvas. When I first looked at the image, I was drawn to the angels and that's because Yantarop has guided my eyes to that area by using all of those simplistic curves. Then you step back and look at the image as a whole and you see the wonderful detail on the right and the man in the thorns. His legs even follow the shape of the material that the angel is wearing. The corpse isn't the dominant part of the image. Faith is the dominant aspect and it is represented in those angels. It is a powerful and inspiring image. I was looking at these floating women and I wanted to incorporate them into my own artwork. It's so heavily stylized and that creates a danger of creating something that is just going to be seen as a copy. I want to create something inspired by Jan Terop's work, but I want to do it in a way that honors him and his artistic practice. I don't think a copy does that because Jan Terop is a creative innovator. And if you're going to be inspired by his work, then you must mix it with your own creativity. I drew this as the basic design that I wanted to use in my artwork. I can incorporate it in a number of different ways and I'm going to use one of my favorite artistic tools, repetition. I've repeated the design and I've created a composition where the women are weaving into each other. You'll also notice how I've incorporated symmetry into the artwork, which is another great artistic tool. I then decided that the women should form the shape of a tree. Jan Terop used symbolism, so I feel that it's acceptable to incorporate other, other symbols. Time to add some colour. I've begun with brown because I want it to be recognisable as a tree. I've added green grass and green for leaves. I've then added pink because it goes well with the colour green. I then added pink in that space that almost resembles a heart. I wanted to add more light and shade to the image and then I added four butterflies. I've been writing lyrics for a song called Butterfly and I know it sounds odd but I got to this stage and realised that this was going to be the artwork for the single. Sometimes you're just working with a particular flow of energy and then everything somehow comes together. You don't always plan to do something, instead you just flow into it. When you look at both images, they have a different feel. My artwork is full of happiness and optimism. Jan Terop's image portrays more complex emotions and a deep philosophical questioning. The original image conveys many complex emotions, but I only chose to look at one aspect, the floating women, the angels that represent faith. And this meant that in this image, it contains nothing but hope and optimism. When I took this symbol and repeated it, my image became hopeful because 
I was only focusing on that aspect from the original. I was drawn to Yantarop's hope and then I created something that only explored that one thing. The song I'm writing is a love song and it came from a memory of love. In reality, that love had contained sorrow and joy, but I wanted to create a song that just focused on the parts of love that I enjoyed. I wanted to remember the good parts of the experience. It was intentional and I didn't consciously realise that I was approaching this artwork in the same way. Jan Tarop's image shows faith and struggle, but I chose only to focus on faith. I was working on the bridge section of the song and I wanted to add something from the image by Jan Tarop. When it comes to the bridge, it can be something different musically, so there is space to experiment. I wanted to create a melody and that meant that I wanted the drawing of a line to, to give me the shape of a melody. This light bluish green line is going to give me the shape of my melody. I've also drawn horizontal lines that can act as the musical staff. I can now add some white circles along that light bluish green line. Now all I have to do is put these notes into music notation software. I'm using Sibelius first, which is the free version of Sibelius. I'll put a link in the description. I'm just looking at the circles in the image and then I'm using that to show me where to place the musical notes. It's a process that I've shown before in previous videos. So if you want to go deeper into this process so you can try this yourself using your own artwork, then check out my other videos. I have a playlist on the relationship between art and music. That playlist contains loads of videos that will help you to do this with any piece of artwork. Speaking of using this approach with any piece of artwork, I also used it with my own piece of artwork. I like the idea of the bridge section bringing together music created from each piece of artwork. I want to have one instrument playing the notes from Jan Tarop's image and another playing the notes from the image I created. At the moment, all three instruments are played on piano because it helps me to hear how well they work together, but later I will change that. The first instrument at the top will play notes that came from the image by Jan Tarop. The second instrument shown on the second line will play notes that come from the image I created. The last instrument will play the bottom line of music. These are notes that I created as a way of bringing the other two instruments together. I'm choosing notes that work well with other notes. I'm just being creative and responding to what I hear. I like this process, but when you're creating music, it's always important to listen to what's there. Let's listen to how that sounds. I've exported it as MIDI and now I want to import it into Ableton Live. 
I altered the scale of the notes to one that's used in other parts of the song because I wanted it to fit comfortably with the other parts. The notes that we got from the image by Jan Tarop are now played on a sound called Amber. I've lowered the notes to give it a bass feel. The effects rack has a scale device on where I've changed the scale. It also has a shaper on. The shaper can be mapped to different knobs. I've mapped it to the filter frequency and it basically says, I want you to move this knob in line with this shape. The shape itself looks pretty extreme, but it's set to a minimum of 48% and a maximum of 56%. So the movement of the knob isn't extreme. It's, it's just enough to give it a little bit of bounce and character. Let's hear how that sounds. The notes from the image I created are played on the cello and the last line of music is now being played on the alto flute. I'm using my laptop to make these sounds. When companies create software instruments to sound like a real instrument, they record samples of each note being played in different ways. This means it's important to tell the computer how you want each note to be played. If we look at the alto flute, you can see a knob titled articulation. This is how I tell the computer how I want that note to be played. So in some places, there are staccato notes, which are sharp notes that are detached from each other. Then in other places, it's legato, which is more of a smooth sound where you're smoothly going from one note to another. I'm now going to add the amber sound and the cello so you can hear the notes from each piece of artwork coming together. Even though I created that last line of music to unite the other parts, I still want to do more to bring each part together. So I recorded all the MIDI from all the other tracks onto one track. It looks busy and it would overpower everything else if I was to have a piano or guitar play this. But I created this instrument called a rainforest flute and it's subtle and packed with ambient sound so it works well with the other instruments. It's there to support the other instruments and bind them together. I'll solo it so you can hear it in isolation. The chorus of the song has this sound. I 
I wanted this to be in the bridge, so I included it and I also added a drum beat. This project has been a great way of connecting to Jan Terop and being inspired by the work he created. Here is the finished track, um, Butterfly. Hope the rain. 